This guy got caught cheating and was ejected. This guy got caught cheating in the exact same way, but for some reason was allowed to stay in the game. MLB is cracking down on foreign substances again, and pitchers are losing their mind. There were more foreign substance ejections in the first three weeks of the season than the entire 2022 season combined. MOV first started enforcing this rule in 2021, but within a year, pitchers started doing this again and getting away with it. This season, the strategies MOB are using to crack down on this are completely different. The same company that helped make napalm and Agent Orange for Vietnam, hydrogen bombs, and breast implants are working with MLB to make a brand new baseball, considering making their own sticky substance. According to some, umpires may begin using these sticky substance machines to bust players. The secret mud that is rubbed on every MLB baseball may soon be banned, and pitchers are getting checked more often than ever. But to them, this makes zero sense. He said, my hand's too sti sticky. And I said, I swear on my kid's life, I'm not using anything else. This time last year, MLB thought it had solved its sticky substance problem, a practice that had been going on in baseball for over a century. The age-old trick of adding a sticky substance like pine tar, sunscreen and rosin, or stickum to get a better grip on the ball. Technically, this has always been illegal, but pretty much everyone in baseball agreed it was acceptable until around 2018 when league-wide spin rates started skyrocketing out of nowhere. This was due to substances like spider tech, which is so sticky, using too much of it can literally cause the leather of the ball to get stuck on a pitcher's fingers. Unlike traditional sticky substances, it isn't used to improve grip or control. It is so tacky that it causes the ball to spin more, adding multiple inches of movement to pitches. Pitchers across the league quickly started discovering substances like this, causing spin rates to explode, strikeouts to reach all-time highs, and batting average to reach all-time lows, until 2021 when MLB pretty much banned it overnight. Umpires began searching pitchers between innings. This caused freakouts, public outrage, ejections, and pitchers stripping in the middle of the field. But spin rates dropped, batting average went up, strikeouts went down, and MLB was satisfied. But in 2022, something strange happened, which resulted in umpires rubbing their fingers in pitchers' hair. James Karinchek was a suspected spider tack user. He was seen constantly reaching into his glove while pitching, a known place pitchers put spider tack. And when MLB cracked down in 2021, his spin rates dropped off a cliff. To make matters worse, so did his stats, and he was even briefly demoted to the minor leagues. But within a few months of getting back, his spin rates suspiciously shot back up close to what they were before the crackdown. He began pitching well again, and instead of reaching into his glove, he was seen constantly touching the rosin bag and running his fingers through his hair after almost every pitch. This was extremely obvious and suspicious, so in a game against the Twins, the opposing manager told the umpires to inspect him. He checked his hat, checked his belt, then rubbed his fingers through his head in front of thousands of people. But despite all the evidence against him, the umpire found nothing. Since he was going to his hair, we know he wasn't using spider tech, but according to the data, his spin rate was close to whatever he was using before the crackdown. Karen Chak was singled out, which is unfair, because pitchers across the league were doing similar things. Since May, league-wide spin rates went up every single month in 2022, coming close to where they peaked before the crackdown. It was obvious pitchers were using stuff, umpires were checking them, yet somehow not a single pitcher got ejected the entire year. It seemed like MLB just quit trying to enforce it until one game in October may have changed everything. In the final game of the wildcard series, Joe Musgrove took the mound, and people online immediately started calling him out for having a very suspicious looking ear, which looked like it had a foreign substance on it. 
Buck Showalter was also suspicious and started checking the ball for anything sticky in the very first inning. Musgrove's spin rates were also up significantly, making this even more suspicious. So after dominating the Mets for five innings, Showalter asked the umpire to search him. People claim this clip shows him wiping off the substance from his ear as the umpire approached him. Another person claims they caught a foul ball during the game and it had a sticky substance on it. But the umpires did a full body check, felt up his ears, and found no evidence of cheating. The Padres then started talking shit to the Mets, Musgrove struck out the next batter and started taunting the Mets, and a few innings later, they eliminated them from the playoffs. Musgrove was never seen touching his ear while pitching, had an increase in velocity which may explain the increase in spin, and was vindicated by the umpires. But still, it became a massive story and debate, and with incidents like this happening, along with spin rate levels trending back up, strikeouts trending back up, and batting average trending ending back down, all approaching the levels MLB had during the peak of spider tack, they felt they needed to crack down again. And just before the season, they released a memo announcing umpires would now check more often, more randomly, and more thoroughly. However, it's turned out to be a lot more complicated than that. During the second week of the season, when umpires checked pitcher Domingo Herman, they found his hands were sticky. But for some reason, instead of ejecting him like the rule state, the umpire just told him to wash his hands. When he came back out the next inning, umpires determined he hadn't washed his hands and that they were still sticky. But even after arguing about it for a few minutes, they, for some reason, still didn't eject him. And the Twins manager absolutely lost his mind. After the game, the umpire explained that he found an excessive amount of rosin on his hand. And since rosin isn't illegal, he just told him to wash it off. But soon after, Max Scherzer found that rosin actually sometimes is illegal. After a routine substance check on Scherzer, an umpire found something sticky on his hand. Not sticky enough to eject him, but sticky enough to make Scherzer wash his hands. According to Scherzer, he immediately washed his hands with alcohol in front of an MLB official, then came out to pitch in the third. He was checked again, and this time, the umpire found that his hand was clean, but that there was still sticky in his glove, so he made Scherzer use a new glove. Then, the next inning, he was checked again. The umpire found what he described as the stickiest hands he's ever felt since MLB started inspecting hands three years ago. Scherzer lost his mind, telling the umpire that it was just sweat and rosin over and over again. When you mix sweat and rosin, it creates a sticky substance. And since sweat and rosin are both legal substances, it's long been believed and treated as a completely legal practice until this year. Because technically, if a pitcher gets rosin on their hat or their jersey or uses an excessive amount of rosin, that is illegal. And all of a sudden, for the first time ever, umpires are actually enforcing this. According to Armand, he just used a rosin bag in the dugout, which is what caused his incident. And according to Scherzer, he stopped using rosin altogether, and the alcohol he was told to use by MLB was the thing that actually caused the sticky substance. And even though excessive amounts of rosins is illegal according to the rules, nothing in the rule book says how much rosin is excessive. Right now, there is a massive gray area, but that could soon change. MLB seems to want to enforce the foreign substance rule 100% of the time and eject any pitcher with any sticky substance no matter what. They are putting in new rules and practices as we speak to make this possible. And the only reason it hasn't happened yet is because of this. The MLB has a very big problem with the baseballs. I mean, they're bad. Everyone knows it. Every pitcher in the league knows it. They're bad. They don't care. The MLB doesn't give a damn. When MLB first cracked down on foreign substances, pitchers across the league started complaining that the baseballs were inconsistent, slippery, and hard to grip without foreign substance. Brand new MLB baseballs have always been slippery, which is why each one is rubbed with a layer of mud that a single family collects from a secret river somewhere in New Jersey. 
But right now, MLB is trying to put these people out of business. Until 83 years ago, MLB didn't use this mud. Instead, umpires would chew tobacco, spit on the balls, and then rub them up before giving them to pitchers. This was disgusting. So one day, a third base coach brought his own mud from home to replace the spit. 80 years later, his descendants collect this same mud and sell it to MLB to be placed on every single Major League Baseball. The mud hole is on public land, so this technically may not even be legal, and the only people who actually know where this mud comes from are the four to five people who collect it every single year. Forever, it's been up to each team's clubhouse manager to rub up each ball with mud. However, there's never been any strict directions or protocol on how it was supposed to be done. Whether I'm doing a good job or not, I don't know, but I haven't had any complaints. They all did it a little differently, and some pitchers would even coerce them into to putting more mud on their balls. This can lead to problems, and last season, it almost got somebody killed. But before we get to that, a quick word from today's sponsor. HelloFresh delivers mouth-watering, chef-crafted recipes and fresh ingredients to your door so you can spend your time doing whatever you want. When we don't have time to cook, we go out and spend a ton of money on extremely unhealthy food. HelloFresh is the opposite. They are more convenient than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. They come with easy instructions to follow that instantly turn you into a gourmet chef. I just made the glazed pork tenderloin and it was by far, not even close, the best meal I ever cooked in my life. They have a massive menu that has options for everyone. Vegetarian meals, pescatarian meals, family friendly meals, high protein meals, fit and whole meals, quick and easy meals, and they're all chef created, delivered right to your door, turning your kitchen into an episode of Top Chef for as low as $7.49 a meal. But for you guys, it's even cheaper. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use code BDE16 at checkout for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh created the best cooking experience for my chef career, and it can for you too. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use code BDE16 right now. In a series between the Angels and the Mariners, Ryan Tapera nailed a leadoff batter with a pitch. Shortly after, he was seen refusing to use the baseballs he was given, complaining and arguing with the umpire because he says the balls were not rubbed up. The very next day, Robbie Ray took a no-hitter into the seventh, but also nailed a batter with a pitch and also complained they were the slickest balls he's ever felt in MLB. That same game, Michael Lorenzen nailed Justin Upton in the head with a pitch. After the game, becoming the third pitcher in this series to say the balls were extremely slick. Another batter was hit the next day, and when the teams played again less than a week later, the Angels felt the Mariners tried to get revenge by throwing two pitches at Mike Trout's head. The next game, to get revenge, they had a random reliever make his first start ever just so he could hit someone on purpose to get revenge and get ejected. That's exactly what he did. A brawl broke out, which led to eight ejections, 11 suspensions, a fractured elbow, sunflower seeds being thrown onto the field, and Jesse Winker flicking off the crowd as he left the game. This incident may have been avoided if the baseballs in this series weren't slippery. MLB was aware of this, and after this series, they immediately announced a new policy. From that point on, all baseballs used in games must be mudded within three hours of each other. They now must be mudded on the same day they are used. Every single ball now has to have the same mud to water ratio. Mud should now be applied to each ball for at least 30 seconds. Mudded balls are no longer allowed to be mixed up in bags with other mudded balls that were mudded at different times, and each bag with mudded balls must be cleaned with a damp cloth, then dried before the mudded balls are put inside. This was done to try to lessen the likelihood
likelihood of a slick baseball, something MLB has acknowledged they have a problem with. Last year, they also implemented new rosin bags, which according to the manufacturer who makes them, makes a player's hands tackier than other rosin brands. The thinking is, if MLB had a ball with a better grip, then pitchers wouldn't need to use foreign substances. And if pitchers didn't need to use foreign substance to get a good grip, MLB could enforce the rule 100% of the time and there would be no gray area like there is today. But since today's balls are slick and hard to grip, MLB knows pitchers would lose their minds if they enforce this. MLB seems to be allowing some stickiness, but not too much stickiness. Problem is, there's no good way to test that. Writer Eno Saris theorized that MLB may be considering machines like this. It measures how sticky something is. If a pitcher goes past a certain threshold, they could be ejected. That could work, but MLB has not publicly said they were considering any methods like this yet. Instead, they're teaming up with Dow Chemical to create the perfect solution. A company that has helped create the ingredients to make napalm and Agent Orange used in Vietnam, hydrogen bombs, breast implants, and even Ziploc bags. They are a multi-billion dollar company that has been around for over 100 years and are now trying to create the ideal ball with the best grip. In Japan and Korea, they have baseballs with leather treated with a sticky substance that makes them tackier and easier to grip. But finding the perfect formula has been harder than expected. They first started all the way back in 2016 when according to Fangraphs, Rob Manfred and MLB agreed they needed to find a new substance that improved the tackiness of the ball. They experimented with it in the Arizona Fall League. They tried this with a different formula in spring training in 2019, but due to negative feedback, they scrapped it. They tried again in 2021, putting a pre tech ball into play for a select few minor league games. And in 2022, they tried again. To MLB's displeasure, walks, hit by pitches, and strikeups all went up. And according to reports, the players hated it. In 2023, they introduced a ball in a league in AA. The ball is treated by a substance made by Dow Chemical. The first nine batters came to the plate, all struck out. Strikeouts are up 24.9%, walks are up 2%, and slugging percentage has dropped 40 points. The ball seems way more difficult to control, but also harder to hit due to the added spin. Earlier in the year, the Trash Pandas threw a no-hitter while still somehow allowing seven runs. Because even though they didn't give up a single hit, they walked four batters and also hit four batters. They lost 7-5 to five while throwing a no-hitter. MLB does not want this. If the ball is too sticky, that would lead to more spin, more movement, causing more walks, less hits, and less action. Exactly what happened with Spider Tech. But if they get the formula right, the ball will be easy to grip without dramatically increasing spin rates. This would eliminate the need for foreign substance and MLB can finally start cracking down on any pitcher using a substance, no matter what it is. This is possible because it's happening in Japan and Korea. But until that ball is created, MLB is in a tough position. If foreign substances go unchecked, spin rate, walks, and hits will go back to where they were before the crackdown. But if they crack down on everything, pitchers won't be able to grip the ball. And right now, it seems like the new ball is the answer MLB is looking for.